Hello and welcome to episode five. Why doing the work yourself is costing you thousands. I'm here and joined by Michael McNeish and Miranda Hill. How are you guys today? Really good. Right. I do want to speak up for Miranda. How funny. I know it's one of the things. It's great having three of us together here today, which uh, are yeah, squeaking over each other. Wonderful. It is so great to be here with you both. Yeah, so look, let's get into this. Whether you're listening to this in your uh, truck, in your van, in your tractor, in your excavator, whatever it is, or on a boat somewhere off in the world, uh, this is the only podcast for tradies and general contractors worldwide. We want to get into the topic of why doing the work yourself is costing you thousands. And I'll never forget uh, back when I first started my cabinet making business, I would have people be like, you know, why are you doing the work yourself? Why are you employing people? I was like, well, you know, like if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. You know, like I'm making more money if I do it myself. You know, hiring someone else is going to cost me time money. For us today, just kind of, I guess, dive in and debunk some of the myths that, that we've found experience within the clients we work with to overcome, to help them to build a profitable trades and general contract business that can actually work without them. Because I honestly believe that our core goal should be to get the business to a position where we do have a team running it. So if something was to happen to us, heaven forbid, the business would still operate and still generate cash and income to support us and our family and also the family of those that we're uh, employing as well. So over to you guys, like why, I guess, what have you noticed so far in people we work with that have this kind of thing going on in their trades business? Over to you, Michael. <laughs> we did that again. We did it again. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go, Miranda. Look, I, I think that the notion that doing it yourself will save you money is what we're, we're yeah. I guess, hitting mm. against here. Because that's why often we, we believe, a lot of people believe that if I do it myself, um, it will save me money. And in, in, in some respect, you're right in terms of gross profit or in terms of immediate cash, because you don't have to outlay anything because it's you, you're the one doing it. But when we say yeah. it's actually costing you thousands, it's costing you so much more in potential growth, so much that you don't even realize that it's costing you or the opportunity cost of, of not growing beyond the, your capability. And that's the problem with doing yeah. it yourself. I mean, the, the number of, of tradespeople that we speak with who uh, work in crazy, stupid hours, you might be one of those people that you're working till late at night, you're not seeing the family, you're, yeah. you're, you're stressed, you're overwhelmed, you're tired, and you're still on the tools, or you're still doing the work. And so, yes, it, in your mind, if, if it's actually um, good, you know, why would you be in a more stressful position as a result of that belief. Well, here's a myth too, though, is that I remember, I remember distinctly back with my first business as I, as I thought, well, if I'm doing the work, I'm making more money. And in actual fact, what was happening is I wasn't charging enough money because mm. I was seeing that all the money that was coming in was going to me. But what I wasn't factoring in for is the fact that if I had to hire somebody to do my work for me, could I pay them a wage or could I pay them their, their invoice and still make money off the top? And I was, actually, I was actually cutting myself off at the ankles because I wasn't charging enough to have somebody else do that job. I was just seeing as, well, I, I just need X amount per hour. I may as well do it myself. And I wasn't looking far enough ahead in the future to go, well, if I had to hire someone, would they actually work for the current rate I'm paying myself? And if they did, would I be making money off the top of them? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Such a great point. And, you know, adding to that, thinking through the lens of time as well. There, it's, it's so often that I notice uh, business owners believe that it's quicker. It's quicker. Yet if we then look at, at hourly, the, you know, the hourly rate, the, what, what people would charge for their time uh, in terms of what that's going to cost their business to, it, it, I guess it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, not always a, a win to have that time invested in doing it yourself when in fact you could probably do a higher leverage, more profitable you know, task that will take your business further that relies on your expertise as head of your business, as leader of your business, yeah. as opposed to getting on the tools yourself. Yeah. In one of the episodes I know we've got scheduled to come up with, uh, we are going to go through the task audit process and teach uh, the listeners and the viewers, how to actually go to extract themselves mm. out of the business. It's the same process that I created to help me remove myself from not just the game changers, but multiple other entities that I'm involved with as well. But I guess the thing that I want um, you guys listening and, and girls listening today to decide is like, do you plan on being a sole trader forever? Or do you plan on just having a trades business or general contracts business that's, that employs one or two other staff? Or do you actually want to get to the position where you have a stabilized and consistent and somewhat predictable business that produces you money even if you're not working there. Because 
a lot of people are like, oh, I'm happy to be a sole trader. And they don't think of the long-term ramifications until they fall off the ladder or they get sick and realize the income stops and they haven't got enough super, they haven't got the insurance, they haven't got enough cash in the bank to provide them with a stable income while they get better. Um, the thing I want to say too, like I uh, first met him this morning back in the new year, I spilled my bulletproof coffee on the uh, on the keyboard of my MacBook and cooked it. So I'm actually recording this live from an iPad and it's annoying the shit out of me looking into the camera. So I'm just going to look at you guys. <laughs> so anyone that's watching the video right now look, thinks that I'm looking off to the side, this is this is why. Um, but I guess, you know, this is where, again, I see a lot of people fail. They don't think of the long-term picture. And an episode we've got coming up too is around the six Ps of planning. But I believe, again, that, that our common goal about anything else should be to build a business that works without us as as business owners and entrepreneurs, because that provides consistency. Now, in order to do that, right now, your business is costing you thousands if you are on the tools, because in actual fact, the best place for you to be is not on the tools. You can find 100 other traders that can pick up and swing a hammer or that can you know use a saw or, or glue some piping together. Your requirement is to be the strategic thinker to drive the business and the culture forward to create an environment that people love working at and people love interacting with. And if you're stuck on the tools 30, 40, 50, 60 hours a week, that's not the highest and best use of your time. In actual fact, the more you can leverage yourself out of the business to be in a position where you can think and to plan and to interact with your staff and to interact with your clients, the more profitable and the bigger business can go. I was speaking to a guy last week. I was on a um, on a yacht cruise through uh, Raja Unpack doing some scuba diving. And I was speaking to a guy there who was a coach uh, in the sexuality space. And he's like, look, you know, business is doing well. I'm doing about 20 grand per month, but I can't seem to get over it. And I said, well, you can't seem to get over it because you're playing roulette. You, you haven't got a business that, that acts as an ATM. And he said, well, what do you mean ATM like roulette? And I was like, well, every month you spin the wheel, you you know, bring on board some new clients, you coach some clients, you get paid for it. But the reason you can't get past that is because you're at the capacity of what you're able to do on your own. There's not a system in place that produces replicable results. At the game changers here, whether I show up or don't show up, the business still generates uh, leads, it still makes sales, we still coach clients, clients get taken care of, stuff get paid. Whether I'm here or not, I don't need to be here, which allows me to do the things that I choose to do, but also allows the business to be set up to infinitely scale, right? Whereas remember before when it was just me doing the job, like my income level got capped at 50K a month. Right. We're well beyond that right now. And I guess this is the thing is that if you are the one stuck in the tools right now, it's costing you thousands through that short term mindedness of believing that no one else can do it like you or as good as you. It's a fucking belief that's going to that's going to kill your business and put you in a lot of shit if it hasn't already. And there's often that voice in your head. I'm wondering if as you're listening to this, you've ever heard this, the voice in your head that says, you know, but I can do it better or faster or quicker or, or, or more efficiently than anybody else. And just know that you're not alone and that, and that most people have that voice in their head, yet that is the voice of your own limit. And, and it's the voice of, that society's conditioned us into. Like, think about yes. it. Like We've been brought up going through to school. It's like hard work pays off. Like studying pays off. We transition out of school, out of college, into employment. Most of us went into some form of a job before we become a business owner, right? Not many people went straight to business owner. Mm. And they're in a job, we'll condition that again, more hours equals more money. You want, you want a bonus? Do more hours, do more work. You want more income? Do overtime. We've been conditioned that input equals output, right? Equal exchange in equals, equals exchange out. Yet as a business owner, that same mindset we've been conditioned into grossly limits your ability to grow. Because in actual fact right now, the amount of hours that I put in compared to the income that I get back out of the opportunity to get back out, is far beyond. But my input is like that story of the guy that got hired to go and fix the, uh, the FedEx production line. Do you hear that mm -hmm. story? FedEx went down. There was no packages moving through the production line. It was costing them thousands of dollars per minute. And they hired this guy to come in and fix it. And he walked around uh, the warehouse for 10 minutes and looked at everything and then walked over to one button on the wall and flicked a switch and the whole production line started back up again. He sent an invoice off to the CEO and the invoice was for $10,000. And the CEO rings up this contract and is like, mate, like you've charged me $10,000. You're in here for 10 minutes. I want to see an itemized quote. And so he reset back the, sorry, the, the invoice and it said, uh, you know, flicking the switch, uh, $10. The knowledge, skill set, and know-how of which flips, switch to flick, $9,990. And this is the thing in business is the more that you can acquire the skill set, the more that you can learn to leverage assets, meaning people and money and time, the more you can gain as, a, as an ROI from a small amount of input. Whereas right now, if you're stuck of like, 
giving one hour to get 40 bucks back or 50 bucks back or 70 bucks back. Just understand there's a limitation of how much money you can make based on how much time you have available to you. Such a such a great story. I've heard it told different ways. It is so powerful. It is it is short term thinking, uh, and it is limited thinking to think that it is easier. It is you know, to to do it yourself is is not going to cost. You know the converse is true, isn't it? It's going to cost far more than probably you're even thinking about at the moment. So I suppose you know the question is is what to do, how to do, uh, you know, how to go about stepping back and doing it differently yeah I, I guess for this episode really the takeaway is first of all to start to to debug that myth right yeah. you are right like it is easier to do it yourself like you're absolutely right with that it is easier it is probably fast and it is probably cheaper yet just understand that, that has larger ramifications than what you're actually consciously aware of right now all right it's that mm. whole saying of like short-term pain can create long-term gain so first of all, you've got to understand that if you want to transition down the gauntlet of building a business that can work without you, it is going to be a bit more expensive. It might cost you a bit more time up front. There may be a bit more frustrations, but I'm telling you right now as someone who's been down the gauntlet and also as all of us have worked with many people that have been down that path, what's on the other side of that? The ability to go away with your family or to travel or to do whatever the, want, the hell you want and still make an income and not have to worry about where the next dollar's coming from is far beyond what you're getting right now from your business being a sole trader or having a very, very small team and still doing a lot yourself. And in that, Michael? Look, I, I love this discussion. I, I think it's incredibly relevant. And I, what I've been sort of thinking about in this conversation is about capacity. And when you're doing the work in your business, you're, you're at the limit of your capacity because what else is there to do? What else can you do? Because you're, you're busy. So you're not actually growing your business. Yeah. You're actually delivering the business. Yeah. So when you're, when you're doing the work, it's costing you thousands because it's costing you potential growth because yeah. you're not growing because you yeah. can't, yeah. you're not working on building that team. You're not working on building those systems. You're not working on, on the business itself. You're working on delivering the work. Cogging the wheel. Yeah. Which again, like you can replace that. Like I remember when I had my kitchen business, I replaced every single role, uh, including quotes, including sales, including manufacture. Except we had this uh, computer CNC machine, like a computer cutting machine that would cut the kitchens out based on a computer 3D CAD drawing. And the only role I couldn't seem to hire for was the person that took the finished plans and entered them on the computer to send them out to the machine. Now, here's the crazy thing about it is I had multiple competitors who were certainly not doing that role. As a business owner, they were quoting or they were doing selling or they weren't even in the business. They had other people hired for that. And so I consciously knew I could hire for that role Yet my own beliefs that nobody could do it as good as me sabotage me from hiring for that role. And we see this all the time. It's like our, un mm. our unconscious and conscious beliefs sabotage our ability to bring on good stuff. So the reality is there is someone out there who's better at nailing nails than you, at joining pipes than you, at digging trenches than you. There is someone better at doing that specific skill set. At the moment, you might be wearing 10 hats and wearing 10 hats quite well. But it's about how can you start to leverage really specific skill sets in, in key areas so you can start to essentially make yourself redundant of those uh, those aspects. So like Michael, you can start to, over, you know, Michael mentions, oversee that mm. business and remove the capacity constraints you have right now. It's a real shift in thinking. I think this is the beginnings of just exploring and noticing now all of those places in your business where perhaps it isn't best for you to do it yeah. all, to wear all of those hats, to do it yourself. What else is possible for you if, in fact, you step back for a moment and relinquish control? And if so, every... Every decision that we make has a consequence in life, yeah. has, mm. a, has a result. And so maybe a really good exercise for you to, to do as a result of, of this podcast episode is to maybe write down like what are the things that it's cost you by delivering the work? Like what are the things that you feel it cost you? Because don't just take our word for it. I want, you know, you've got to think about it yeah. yourself. Yeah. Like what, what have you yeah. given up? Michael, you just read my mind. I, I was going to leave them with some questions. It's like first of all, first question is like what do you want? Like mm. where, if, if you could wave your magic wand, imagine right now that there was no constraints in place of money or time or skill set. You could just wave a magic wand and imagine your future. Like in five or 10 years time, where would you like to be? What would you like to be doing? What would your business look like? How much cash would you be making? How would you be spending your time? And then as Michael mentioned, uh, look into the way that you're currently running it and ask like, what is the cost or what is the consequence of me doing what I'm doing right now? And, and another question too is like, what beliefs do I have around growing my business? Or what beliefs do I have around hiring good staff or finding good staff? 
or way the what around the ways that I manage my staff. Just allow yourself to ask uh, some different questions and just notice what's there for you. That's I guess the key takeaway of today's episode. Yeah, yeah, such a great point. You know, if you're not getting the answers that you want, ask different questions. Absolutely. So that's it for us. Let's leave that there and uh, make sure you join us for episode six where we actually start to debug why it's so hard to find good people if you want the job done right, you've got to do it yourself. So uh, go away, reflect on those questions and join us for episode six where we start to teach you guys uh, the method that we've taught hundreds of our clients uh, how to find amazing talent in any trades business. Thanks, Brandon, Michael. Enjoy the episode. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you, you like this episode, subscribe to the Tradie Business School podcast. See you on episode six. See you soon. Bye.